Okay, now let's look at extract. So we're going to take this first piece of the puzzle and see how do we take a CSV file, extract data from it, and bring it into data stage. So the first step is, like always, we're going to click on File, and then we're going to go down to New. And in New, you'll see we have Parallel Jobs and we have Server Jobs. So obviously we want Parallel Jobs. We've been working with that the whole time. And the idea here is let's uh, maximize this window out. Then let's go down to the palette and we need to go to file because we're dealing with CSV files. And like we said before, we're dealing with sequential files because the sequential file stage specifically in the file group from the palette, we want to drag that on to the canvas. Sequential file is named that way because every time you bring in a file or a group of files, they're read into data stage in sequential order. So we're going to click here which is on the text for the name, and we can start renaming this. I'm going to just type in CSV. Alternately, you can right-click and select Rename. And then now we need to look at the properties for the CSV sequential file. And here are things we saw before, right? We have the NSL, uh, NLS map, we have the NLS locale, uh, things we're not really going to work with right now. And then remember we saw earlier execution mode, so whether or not this was going to be sequential or not. And you can see by def you don't have any choice here, it has to be sequential. That's a sequential file, it must load things in sequentially. And then we had seen earlier about com, com a combinability mode, whether it could be combined or not combined. Um, with this is sort of the idea of collections from before. And we have this idea of a configuration file. We're not going to use these. This is interesting though, where it says node map constraint. So we know that we have two nodes in this uh, in our license on this server. We have two nodes, um, two processors. There is node 1 and there is node 2. So you could constrain the processing of this particular job down to just node 2 or just node 1 and then not use the second node at all. And then there's not really much under general to, to work with. And in fact, really, there's not much at all to, to do right now. And the reason for that is because we're just looking at the properties for the file itself. And we haven't really used the idea of an entity relationship. In other words, we need this needs to be either in an input or in an output and in order to make it an input or output we need links well we don't have any links so there's not really much going on in the properties for CSV so to make a link what you do is you you can go to the general tab and you can click on link and you can click here and drag one out but and that works fine but it tends to be much faster to simply right click and drag to create the link and now what you can do is we're going to take a very, very simple example and extract the data from our CSV and we're going to store it in another CSV. So let's do that. I'm going to drag out another sequential file and I'm going to drop it here for right now. I just want to show you that the link here will snap onto the other sequential file when you get it close enough to the head of the arrow. So there you go. And now it's connected. And the same thing you can do with the properties of a sequential file you can do with links too and what I mean there is that you can right click and rename it and a lot of times this is this is going to completely depend on you of course but I, I will often say in and then put CSV2 because I'll often make this one CSV2 and then when when you are looking at the properties of the second one uh, you'll see the input name and it says in so that just is sort of logical the other thing you can do is you can move this label over because this is sort of in a strange location. You can move, move it up and in fact you can try to move it way off of the link but it will snap to the uh, to the link itself so if you just want it above you kind of drag it up there a bit. If you go too far it'll you know, kind of snap back down. There you go, you can go up, you can go down, you can go left and right and uh, you can, it's actually very useful when you have lots and lots of links. The whole point of doing that though was that now you have your CSV as an input and CSV2 is considered an output and you can tell by the direction of the arrows of course and in fact look at this if I drag this one over here look what happens to my arrows okay now we are actually the whole thing the job is now starting from the right and going left so if you want to do that you can okay now and data stage of course just reads the direction of the arrows to determine where things should go 
Now the point of that again, if I double click on CSV, something just changed. Earlier, we just had stage. We, we didn't have this output tab. But now that we have an output to it, we do have an output tab, and then this is where things actually get interesting. The first piece is that we need to determine the file. So you go to the file under source, and you can select this arrow, go down to browse for file, and what I've done is I have created under my documents, I created a folder called data stage, and inside that I've created a folder called employees.csv. This is a very, very simple file. I literally just typed it in, and it says first name, surname, employee ID, and then you know the names John Smith and one, Linda Johnson two, and that's it. So the idea is we're going to start with that file. So you can't just drag this on here, unfortunately. That would be nice, but you can't. So instead, you need to select it, and I'm going to do that right now. You may need to go to your C drive, and then navigate to Users, in this case, and then go to Administrator, is the name of the account I'm in now. Then go to Documents, and from here, go to Data Stage, and then there's the file. Okay, so that is the file. Right now it's in red, but if I move down to the next one, next entry, that will go away. You'll see the read method is a specific file, that's what we want. Generally, you don't need to change this too much, it's certainly the file that you do need to change. The other thing you, you do need to change here is if the first name includes, um, if the first line includes column names, and unfortunately that is set to false by default, and so I'm going to set that to true. And you can read through these. Uh, if you click each of them, you'll get a description of what's going on here. Keep file partitions, false, missing file, depends, reject mode, and some other things. We'll talk about these uh, a little bit more later. But for now, uh, you, what you really need to do is set the file and tell it you want the first line that contains column names. The next thing you need to do is go over to Format. And unfortunately, this is also um, not very obvious, but there's a uh, a limitation of sequential files, which is that sequential files cannot contain nulls. And so you need to tell sequential files what to do if you get a null value. And so to do that, go to Field Defaults, and then on the bottom right you can see these options. The one we want here is Null Field Value. So on import, the value given to a field containing a null. And what I'm going to do is just uh, do double quotes and then null, like that. And we'll, that way we can see if the value had null or not. Okay, now we need to talk about, in the Columns tab, we need to talk about something called C, uh, Table Definitions. And Table Definitions are uh, something you're already very familiar with. If you open up, um, for example, your database, and you look at we're going to look at the party table. These, this metadata about the columns, about the information in that table, this is the table definition. It is, it's telling you what the types are, how long they are, if it has a scale, what, you know, whether it's been generated, if nulls are allowed. You do not want to type all of this in. You will drive yourself crazy. It's way too much work, and you're likely to get the values wrong. So instead, you do you use what's called a table definition. And what you would do is you click on load and then go and locate it. However, data stage has z no idea right now what the what this ought to represent. If this is an n var car, if this is an int or a big int or what these options ought to be. So we need to tell we need to tell the system uh, that information. And so we're going to do that now, so you can see though this is the options under advanced, we're not really going to cover that for right now, but anyway, let's click on OK. We need to get the table definitions. The easiest way to get a table definition is to go here under table definitions, and we are actually going to create a new one. So I'm going to right click and make uh, go to new, a new folder, and then I'm going to call this sequential, or you could just call it files, but uh, I'll call it sequential files, why not? And then from here, you can right-click and go down to Import a Table Definition, which is a slightly strange way to, to, to put it, but this is very, very useful. Import Table Definition. You go down here to where it says Sequential File Definitions, and now things are starting to get interesting, because what we can do is select our directory, 
and we need to uh, basically do what, what we did before, which is select the data stage. But notice there's nothing in here. And the reason for that is because it says file type .txt. Well, our file is not .txt, it's CSV. So we need to select that file type, and now go back to our directory name. And then we're still seeing, oh, there's nothing in here. Now, why would that be? We have to check the path, be sure we're in the right path. And indeed we are. And actually, the reason for this, I so <laughs> shouldn't have told it to you this way, but basically what we need to do here is only set the directory. It's once you set the directory that something interesting happens here in files. You're not actually going to see them listed under files. And there it is. So now we see the file, a whole list of all the files that are in that directory. And what you have to do here is click on it, and then this button that says import will highlight. And this is actually s really nice. And also, by the way, you can see your NLS mapped out here. So what you want that to be, you can you can set it in advance if you like. Um, and then this is telling you where that once we're done doing this import, w where that metadata is going to go, and that's the folder there. And it's also telling you uh, the data source and the data uh, the data source name, the sequential, and goes to the data stage. The important thing here is you select your file. So first select your directory, you select the type, and then you select your file and go to import. And take a look at this. What this will do, telling you the map that it's using, is it will show you all of the data, or at least a preview of it, and try to automatically determine what on earth is first name? Wh what kind of content does this have? And in this case, we need to say, okay, well, we have comma separated, so it's a delimited file. The first, name, the first line does contain column names. And then when we go to define, we have all of this interesting thing, these interesting things here. We have var cars, 255. Look, look at all this work it saved us. It, it figured out the name of the column. It figured out whether or not it, it, what its SQL type is. It told us how long that could potentially be. And of course, you can change this. And it told us the scale. Um, uh, scale w is if you have an uh, uh, three digit is a f it's a uh, fractional number. So if you have 1.25, you can set your scale to reflect um, how m how large the amount is. So a scale of two would be you know two decimal points essentially. And then you can determine whether or not it's nullable. The importer did not see any null values, so it said, well, no, it can't be null because every value uh, you've got listed in your definition here in your in your not your definition, but your content has no nulls, so there's no nulls allowed. But you could change that and say, yes, nulls are allowed for this column, and so on, on along down the line. And this will tell you display. So even though you have 255 potential values, you're displaying only five of them. And you can, you can also include your own description if you like. Um, this may seem a bit nitpicky, but this is really the core of day-to-day -day work. You need to get these accurate and the very first time so that you don't have trouble down the line. What you might want to do, for example, here is hit the drop-down and then type N so that, it'll, so that you will be navigated directly to N car or N var car. And the difference, by the way, of car and var car is that car is, if you say it's a uh, length 255, it doesn't matter if you've only used you know, two or three letters, the database will take 255 uh, into consideration. It'll use 255, you know, bytes or 255 uh, storage units to, to store it, whereas a variable length character will only use what you've, what you're using. So if you only have three or four characters, it would only use three or four of the 255, um, you know, allotted space units to, to save that. So very often, you know, in Varkar, makes makes good sense and that's what I'm going to choose here and the other reason for doing that is and actually I'm just hitting in each time here to cycle through these so you can quickly choose them and you can do that with the keyboard too if you just wanted to uh, move here to 255 and say no I only want 10 you can type in 10 and hit the down arrow to move around that way you don't have to click and point and click which takes um, much longer so there I'm going to just put that back to 255 and then where it says extended again we saw this in the uh, in LS map, there's nothing to choose, so that saves you some time later. You don't have to, um, you don't have to deal with that. And then integer of 10 is is fine, so we're going to click on OK. Now, what that's going to do is save that table definition into into data stage. And if you take a look now, and of course we had a sequential, so if you wanted to, you could keep all those under sequential here. In fact, that's probably a good idea. You don't want two separate ones, so I'll clean that up in a minute. But the point is. There it is. Um, it actually gets 
imported into sequential because of the previous screen, but the point is you now have the definition listed here. And so if I go to CSV and I go to my columns, I don't have to type all that in. I can just select load and then go down to my table definitions, go down to sequential, and then select it. And take a look at this. It's all here. Just click OK. You could, if you wanted to, um, select a few or just you know, select none of those. I want all of them, so I'll select that. And then if you hit columns, you can see the actual columns that it found. And then you can click on um, OK. But separately, if you wanted to, you can click on View Data and select or click OK. And then this will take a second, but DataSage will read the data from your CSV file and show you the data uh, inside the program itself, which is really nice uh, if you have a lot of data, but it can take a second to display. And there you go. Okay, and then from there you can click on OK. So now we have data coming into data stage. Now what we need to do is we want to write it out to a file. So again, this is the input and this is the output. So the idea here is we need to provide enough information in the output stage, in the sequential file in the output stage, to save the data. So I'm just going to, you can either double click or you can right click and select properties. And same thing, you need to select a file and I'm going to click on Browse. Now we don't have a file here, so what I'm going to do is just create one, out.csv, and click on OK. And then again, uh, where we saw before, first line is the column name, so I'm going to set that to true. And just like we did before under, f uh, under format, under field defaults, remember that sequential, file f sequential files cannot handle nulls. So you go to field defaults and then click on null field value and again I'm just going to plug in null. In our example this isn't going to do much but uh, you need to provide for this otherwise you'll get error message messages when you try to run your job. And then for the columns notice what happened. We defined them in the input and so the input uh, name here uh, automatically carried them through so we don't have any additional work to do at this point which is really quite nice. And, and then we click on OK. Now, the question is, so we have created a very, very simple parallel job. How do we run this thing and actually see the CSV output, the out.csv? And the idea is, you go up here to run. Now, you, it, that needs to compile first, but when you click on run, it'll automatically compile. And it says to you, you haven't saved it, do you want to save and compile? So we say yes, we do, and we'll say, uh, we'll say initial test, maybe, and click on save and says, oh, we've already got that, well, fine, it's test two. You give it a name, and then you'll notice that it's automatically been compiled. We know from seeing before that this actually is compiled into orchestrate, and now it says, if there aren't any errors, you'll get this screen. If you get an error, you'll see a screen on the other, uh, after having clicked, ha having clicked OK or run there. But we didn't get any errors, which is great, so we're now going to just click on run, and, take a look at this. If I, first of all, look at the color. We immediately got a green color, or almost immediately got a green color. We get status information that was not here before. It says two rows. And what has happened is it's transferred, it's extracted from the ETL, it's extracted the data from the CSV, and then saved it into CSV2, which really we probably should have named out, or out.csv. But uh, you get the idea. And notice the other thing here. We're, first of all, let's take a look at the, uh, the data output. If I click on view data, same thing as before, and click on OK, we'll see what was actually saved into out.csv. And that is going to take a second. But there it is. So we have exactly the same two people that were in the input are now in the output, and that's what we wanted. Then separately, if I move this window off to the left, and now I open up the director, because we had mentioned before that the director is going to essentially hold all of our um, monitoring information and, s and show us all the jobs and see the log for the jobs. If you click on uh, jobs here, uh, you'll see a list of those. And then you can click on the log icon to see the log output for that job. Now in this case, we need to save our, save our list there, save uh, test 2. And notice that we actually don't see it listed anywhere. And you, you might think, well, well, 
why is that? Well, first of all, there's a mistake. When I saved it, I saved it under table definition, so that's no good. So what you can do, and this is often the case if you if you just need to, uh, say, try a test of something, uh, you can just quickly save this as some other name. So I'm just going to call this, I'll say test3. And what you need to do is go up here to where it says jobs and select the jobs folder. Okay, now we can rerun this, recompile. It says it hasn't been compiled, so you need to recompile. Then run it and give it a second. Now blue, by the way, means it's processing. And then after blue it'll turn red or it'll turn green. Red means obviously there's some error. And then green means it's working. And once we do that, we should now see test3, there it is, listed in the director. To see the output or the log of that, you go here to the log file. And then there we can see, oh, did we have some errors? Yes, we did. Uh, sort of. Not an error, but a warning. And you have warnings, you have information, and you have errors. To get more information about a particular warning, you can, s you can double click and you'll see, okay, well, CSV0 was missing a record delimiter of um, RN, so instead of an EO, it's on EOF, so in other words, it's seeing a Windows based file rather than a Unix based uh, end of line, but that's fine. And then we see another warning here that says CSV0 import warning at record 1, so that's basically what it was, was saying. But it found all of the records that we wanted. Now, separately, if you need to delete a file like we do here, you can use the window to, n to navigate to it if it's open, but it's not open, so I can just right click and then I can delete or I can rename it um, or even edit directly here. Now, I'm just going to click on delete and then click on OK. We don't need it. And then there we go. And then separately, earlier I had made this mistake of, oh, well, I tried to put my table definitions in sequential files. We don't need that folder either. So we can right click on it and delete that as well. And then that will go away.